So um, today, Lars is going to talk about uh, illustrating, he's going to illustrate how the upcoming digital product focus and the associated new high level abstraction with seven new agile value streams in IT for IT can help organizations to holistically manage um, digital end to end. And no better person than to talk about that than Lars. Over to you, Lars. Warm welcome. Thank you, Steve. And um, and also, it's a, it's a pleasure to be a speaker here at the at the first digital event. Um, I think there is a lot of benefits in actually being digital as an organization that promotes digital. Um, so we can we can reflect about a lot of negative things that are coming with the COVID-19 situation. Uh, I, I won't go down that part, but I would make the reflection that um, in in difficult times is is often a, um, a inflection point where where new ideas really break through, and digital is one of them, right? So thinking about what would it be have done if if it was 20 years ago the COVID 19 had happened, um, that would have been even more problematic because it turns out that there is a lot of things we can do. Um, in our home offices uh, with these kind of technologies that is available. I just came uh, across a, an, an interesting event um, a few days ago that shows what it means to have embraced the digital transformation in these hard times. And that's the, uh, the rap uh, musician, Travis Scott. I don't know if um, any of you know about him. He's typically not associated with people with gray hair like myself, but nevertheless, um, and, um, and, and obviously, uh, as many other musicians, he's having this challenge that he cannot go out uh, to all the, the classical concert shows that he would perform. That's pretty much shut down most places in, in the world. <clears throat> and so uh, I don't know if it's him himself or his team or um, who actually came up with the idea, but they decided to uh, make an... Uh, an event, a, a concert within the Fortnite uh, game engine or within the Fortnite game. They did that a few days ago and had 12 million people listening in to, to that uh, event. Uh, it was an all-time record for Fortnite itself, which in and by itself is a record-breaking uh, modern game um, uh, organization. Um, they built uh, Scott as a as a virtual avatar, uh, scaled it out in, in in many different ways, and had a lot of events going on in there. So everybody is pretty amazed about what happened. And so um, that's actually interesting in the sense that he would never get 12 million listeners to a a regular concert, right? Suddenly he went digital, probably because he was forced to do something like that. Um, but it was a huge success. Uh, now people will say, well, he didn't really sell any any tickets, uh, so he didn't get ticket revenue. But I'm pretty sure I'm actually already seeing on the net that now the the, the skins and 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 the merchandise are becoming hot items uh, that that came from that. So the digital artifact that is produced for this event is now something that you can start sell, etc. So I'm pretty sure he's going to make a lot of money on that. And obviously, people are now downloading his music uh, as well, and or listening, not downloading their uh, streaming in from Spotify or whatever, right? So uh, quite transformational. And so if we if we think about that and and go to the um, uh, uh, thinking about what goes on behind the scene, so. So uh, Travis Scott, he's part of a, um, uh, a record label. Uh, it's Grand Hostel Records, a uh, traditional, uh, semi-traditional record label. Uh, they're in the rap music business and been there for 15 years or something like that. And I'm pretty sure they have lots of different kinds of IT solutions already in place. Um, they might not have a mainframe as I've depicted uh, here in, in, in this one, uh, but, uh, but they for sure have accounting systems, they have digital production systems, they, they have a lot of different things, right? Uh, and now this came in, so, so how did they do that, right? So how did they manage that new situation? How did they perform something as fast as suddenly just creating a really successful event within a game like Fortnite? Uh, what kind of IT systems do they need to have in place? And that's a reflection on many companies is that uh, digital transformation is not necessarily about 
uh, let's clean it all up. Let's all be SaaS and, and it's all great, right? You have a lot of existing things you still need to, to run, um, but then you need to add to it. So actually what is going to end up is that the world is getting more complex. Uh, don't believe that, um, or at least I'm not uh, believing that there will be a big transformation going on and everything will be smart and regular. No, it's going to be more complex. IoT is adding complexity. SaaS is adding complexity. Um, and you're not necessarily turning off all the old stuff because you have a lot of value in the legacy that you have. And even the ones you turn on today, five years from now, they will be considered legacy, right? So, so the, uh, the one thing that is sure is that complexity goes up and you still want to be digital. So then let's reflect on this uh, from a different angle and saying, well, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, what was the role of the CIO? The, the role of the CIO was essentially to mess for less, right? Run the ERP system, run the mail system servers, uh, do it uh, as cheaply and efficient as, as possible, and just make sure that you support the business. CIO gives the CIO some money every year, maybe 4% of the revenue. Um, that is completely transformed, right, to today, where if you want to do uh, transformation, the CIO is actually not necessarily in the driver's seat any longer. There is these chief product officers or chief digital officers within the lines of business that comes up with ideas and they want speed. So this is an example here. So let, let's just imagine a day in the office of Travis uh, Scott's uh, uh, record label, right? And then somebody says, well, we can't do concerts. Let's uh, uh, do it virtually, right? And they brainstorm quickly and they say, well, actually, what, what's the best audience? Well, if, uh, there's a good Venn diagram of Fortnite players and, and rap musician listeners, and, and that's the biggest game. So can we do something in the, uh, in the Fortnite uh, environment? And so you go to the CIO, imagine they, they would go to the record label CIO and say, okay, we would like to, uh, to do a virtual concert in, in, in a digital uh, game. And then in the traditional way, the CIO would go, okay, yeah, I'll set, a, set down a group and they will write a requirement specification for sending out a tender to game engine companies that can help us implement a platform for doing um, in concert things. And we can't really see that the current games allows this. So, so we probably need some custom development from the game platforms to be able to allow that. Um, same place uh, six months later, hasn't happened yet, right? I'm pretty sure that what they did um, within the, uh, the record label of Grand Hostel Records was something that was not taking half years, full years. It's something they've done extremely quick, right? So the CPOs, the, the chief product officers that really want something to be done, he needs speed, right? The CIO still at the record label needs agility, right? So saying, yeah, okay, that's fine. So we now did this event. We did it in Fortnite. It was run on top of the, uh, the Epic um, engine. I believe it's Epic that is used by, uh, by Fortnite. Um, but we might actually want to repeat another event within another game environment. And, and that might be uh, uh, based on the Steam engine. So can we recreate that there, right? Uh, by the way, we, we, we cut some corners in, in producing all the artifacts the first time, so we want to move them over to another platform for, for storing all the digital contents now that we need to merchandise it and sell it, right? So he needs agility to be able to move things around as they scale out the operation. With whatever is successful needs to scale out, whatever is not successful needs to be quickly turned off so that it doesn't burn money and not being used. And while I, this was going on, imagine again, um, the CISO, he's increasingly getting into play. He wasn't as important 20 years ago. Uh, but today, if somebody had heard about that, that uh, Travis wanted to do a, a, an in-concert uh, Friday in, in Fortnite, uh, why don't we do a denial of service attack? Uh, because yeah, we don't want him to be successful or do some ransom or not doing the denial of service attack just while this is going on, right? Uh, so all of these things needs the CISO needs to react quickly and and actually take security uh, into account when you do this with speed. And then finally, you have the CEO uh, of of the record label. IT is no longer just something that makes uh, collecting uh, money and and sending out bills and and uh, etc. 
it's it's really it's uh, it's a real time business generator suddenly right so he wants to know exactly what is going on how is the development plans for the fortnite go, going on what are uh, what are all the steps that we're doing are we in control are we not in control so the ceo needs insight so what does all of that really means well it really means that essentially IT is the business now, right? That's the digital transformation. That is that IT becomes the business. So the business is IT technology, information technology. So if that's the case, <clears throat> how do we manage that? Well, the first thing is that many uh, people are, are kind of um, trying to taste it worth saying, saying digital business, that implies that the product becomes digital. So really what you need to do is digital product management. What does digital mean? And what we've done in the IT for IT forum is to start defining that more uh, coherently. And later in the day, Mark Botman will talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, we'll publish a, a white paper soon on, on what is uh, digital product management really all about. But it turns out that IT for IT is extremely well suited to manage digital product. And you need to really treat your information technology as a product management problem. Is to, uh, so it's no longer just about uh, making some ads, apps and making sure they run. It really is the entire field of product management you need to bring to bear across the planning, the building, the delivery of the run of this. Okay. So <clears throat> there's also another question about, well, is the digital product the same as a, as a regular product? Um, and by the way, what about this concept of, of, of service management as opposed to product management? Well, this figure you see here and is, is a figure that has been a slight adaptation of something that is already in the IT for IT 2.1 uh, book, <coughs> excuse me, which is really around the, the concept of saying uh, what m matters to people consuming information technology is the outcome. That's the same as when you, when you consume a product, it's the outcome of using the product that is important. And typically a digital product is really delivered as a service. It might be that the digital product is physically shipped as uh, bits in, in some way and, and sold to other customer uh, organizations. But at the end of the day, the delivery of the, of the service is something that runs on a computer. So essentially what you say is that you have the concept of a service offer, which describe what the consumer of that product can expect. And it also, describe what kind of interaction should go on between the consumer and that system that is the running product as such, right? So digital product is really based on, you have a system which all the integrated resources, the code, the compute, the device, technology, uh, and subscriptions to other subsystems that allows you to deliver a service that produce an outcome for some uh, consumer of it. So that thinking has actually been part of IT for IT since yeah, 10 years, pretty much, right? So we just need to tweak a few words to really get people to understand it's all about product management. Well, that's pretty great, right? Uh, and then you could say, well, if, if we look at the, the value streams in IT for IT that, that is now have become pretty prevalent in for, for a lot of people to understand is that you have the concept of your know, strategy to portfolio requirement to deploy request to fulfill and detect to correct, right? If you look at that in the previous setting the slide before. What you see there is that um, managing that system that delivers the digital product is something you need to do from a strategy to portfolio perspective, the plan part. You need to do it in, in, a, in a development uh, perspective with requirement to deploy. You also need, a, at the end of the day, to detect and correct anything that goes on when the system is running. The request to fulfill is the new kit on the block. and Sadia also discussed it a bit that, that this 4% that has become 25% is really important. It was something new that we really introduced with IT for IT. It was not plan, build, run. It was plan, build, deliver, run, right? Um, as we have evolved our understanding of what really goes on in organization when they deliver it, we figured out, well, request to fulfill is really not a single value stream. It's actually three value streams, right? There is one value stream which is around from whatever is released to create an offer that can be consumed. And then there is a the concept of requesting that offers and fulfill it. That's really kind of the word request to fulfill. 
But it's also about whenever you create more features or correct bugs or patch or change the security of a, a system that is running supporting uh, the digital uh, products and the service being delivered, then you, uh, you need to be able to quickly deploy. So you also have a, a deployment uh, angle to it. So we really need to open that up a little bit. But it also gives a, a line which is pretty easy to paint on the existing backdrop of IT for IT uh, is that you essentially have this uh, system lifecycle, uh, which is controlled by the backbone uh, described in IT for IT. But then the service offer lifecycle is actually uh, the concept of the, of the offer, the uh, subscription, the uh, service level, and the chargeback uh, or showback contract, right? The, those becomes the service offer lifecycle that needs to be controlled as well. So as we move towards the next release of IT for IT, we are starting to introduce these kind of concepts. Uh, because that's a natural evolution, it's not a revolution, it's evolution of the IT for IT standard that allows you to serve digital more. We're actually taking another perspective on it, and, and that goes back uh, when, when we talked about the, um, uh, uh, well, that was Mike and, and his team from, uh, that, that talked about the, uh, the capabilities that they build out in order to, uh, to create their, uh, their innovation within Nationwide, is that, uh, you're sort of flipping between a functional component, a capability, and then the value streams. And when we started out IT for IT, these concepts was not very prevalent in the industry. It was not super well understood. Maybe a few enterprise architects here and there really got it right. Uh, but be honest with yourself about what it all looked like uh, five and 10 years ago. Today, the concept of value stream mapping has become more and more mainstream, uh, but also managing capabilities and, and data objects. And so we are really starting to look into saying, well, from a capability perspective, it's actually, as a side note, interesting to note that the uh, capabilities, uh, no, the value streams, the four value streams of uh, IT for IT version um, 2.1 is actually modeled in Archimate as capabilities because Archimate did not have value streams when we created 2.1. Today, Archimate has value streams, so we can have a proper modeling of that. And then we can separate between capabilities and value streams. It becomes a bit theoretical, uh, but it's important to say that, well, fundamentally, you need to have the capability to plan, to build, to deliver, and run, and which you can subdivide into more uh, finer grain capabilities. And we've uh, divided in this figure here into eight more fine grain capabilities. And then you can overlay the, the value streams on top of it. What I would like to break with, though, is the chain concept, because when we present the, the four value streams of IT for IT as a chain, um, then people immediately think that's waterfall, the one thing ends, and then it hands it over to the next step, and then uh, it does something and hands it on. So you have a plan, you hand over to development, development, hand over, release to uh, deliver, right? No, that's actually not how it works. You need to have strategy to portfolio to explore what is possible. So that comes back to uh, Travis Scott, the rapper, and, and what happens at, at his record label, right? Uh, that's a completely new idea to go in and do a rap concert in a Fortnite engine, right? If they had said, oh, that's a new plan, right? We need to put it into our strategic uh, planning exercise, which we run once a year, and then you can have it as a line item, and we can discuss whether we would rebalance our budget to do this instead of the other, right? It would never have happened, right? It's, it's, forget about it. No, what happened is that somebody said, yeah, that's an interesting idea. We kick it up as something we explore. Is it possible or not possible? You, you chalk up some of the epics. Now we're back to say five language of things that needs to be done in order to deliver a minimal viable uh, solution. Uh, it's something that is not done only by a planning department. They work active with a development department that says, what do we need to do? How can we possibly de develop all of these uh, artifacts that we need? How could we possibly uh, develop a package that can be injected into Fortnite? Is it realistic, right? And at some point they say, yep, that seems possibly possible. Let's allocate budget for the first iteration of doing it, a, a proof of concept, right? And that kicks off a requirement to deploy a, a, a continuous integration loop that, that loops around three times until it has something that seems to be working. And then you go back and say, let's get some more money. Let's really do the big plan. And, and they're, they're ready to go. And here you could say the other thing we've done in this figure is to say, 
And the service backbone, as it was defined in, in version 2.1, we could actually just rename a couple of the objects to call them product uh, instead of service. Because really that the struggle uh, five, 10 years ago was, was service orientation or product orientation, most important in the world, was not clear cut at that time. Uh, today, product has won, basically. It is product management. So uh, think about all of these key artifacts to really control the products that you deliver using information technology. Now, so that was quite a story. So let's go back to the uh, CPO, CIO, CISO, and the CEO. They want speed, agility, insight, and uh, security, right? Uh, so that's another aspect of when we look at that landscape with all of the, the value streams, the capabilities and the functional components and, and the data objects that IT for IT have. And of course, I would need much, much more than 25 minutes to give full credit to, to what is going on there, but can it actually deliver agility, speed, security and, and insight? And it turns out absolutely it can. Insight is really around collecting data from all of these connected record fabric that IT for IT uh, define, right? So that you can actually relate your incident, your performance, your status, your, your development, uh, together with the requirements and the backlog from the customers into insight that allows you to optimize what is your strategy, what is it that you want to have in your portfolio. And a lot of organizations cannot do that today because they don't have that connected tissue. IT for IT defines how you can uh, develop your platform for managing digital so that you can get the insight. Agility, we, we talked about, is that you can quickly try something new uh, and, and figure it out. Speed is around, you can iterate through these kind of things. And security is something you can overlay in the testing aspect in, in how you operate. You actually also operate from a security perspective in addition to traditional IT uh, perspective, right? So you can deliver all of these four key things speed, agility, security, and insight on top of uh, the IT for IT landscape or IT for IT reference architecture. So that really takes me uh, to the end of the presentation here to say, well, IT is becoming the business in the digital world, right? IT for IT defines the architecture for managing digital. And IT for IT is well prepared to manage IT as a business because it delivers the ability to do speed, agility, security, and insight. So with that, I would say thank you for listening uh, to this. Uh, if you want to know more, join the IT for IT forum. If you have that uh, possibility else, uh, look forward to a release in a theater near you soon that will explain more of these kind of things. Digital white paper, uh, digital product white paper is, is the next uh, delivery coming out. and. Um, uh, later in the afternoon, uh, Mark Botman will talk a bit more about what it means to be a digital product. Thank you. Lars, a virtual round of applause and uh, and thank you very much for your uh, for your insights there. Um, we do have a few uh, a few questions come in, um, and you know, we we hear a lot everywhere about this uh, this kind of move to product from service. And as you, as you said, products won out now, it's clear. Um, that's the way it is. So the, the first question is, is around that. If IT for IT is product centric, can you explain how that's relevant to a customer as a consumer? Or is the definition of product expanded where a company builds a product like MicroFocus and a customer uses them to build products for its customers? Right. No, it's 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 a it's a fair question. I want to use uh, this slide as as a backdrop for it, um, mm -hmm. because you could say, yeah, obviously, Microfocus. We we're delivering digital products. We that that's always been our business. So so no big deal there. We are increasingly starting or uh, increasingly delivering it as a service. So we run it as fast for our customers instead of just de delivering a a a, a back of bits that that the customer themselves can can use. So that's the that's the only quote unquote transformation we're going through. Um, but if if I'm um, if I'm an IT organization servicing uh, the uh, some lines of businesses, if you start thinking about the insurance policy application, if it's an insurance company, is actually a product that can be, is consumed by the uh, end customers. You have to think about well, what what do I need to do with this product to make it earn more money, right? 
Uh, so suddenly the entire concept of what is the value of the product is completely rethought. And all the disciplines that product management has, has uh, figured out and documented in their training courses and, and curriculums in universities around you, you can take an MBA in learning how to do it, is actually what IT needs to serve. It's not just about, yeah, the, the app is running, the, the lights are green, uh, and according to the functional spec, it delivers exactly what was in the functional spec, so who's not to like it? You need to think about, can, can I get more business? What do I need to do in order to make it better? The safe movement and the agile DevOps movement to some degree are already there, right? Because they, they say, well, it really matters that feedback loop in constantly understanding is the real consumer of the service happy, right? Now you might even start doing more money associations with it, which is important. Right. It does require a lot of IT organizations to get new roles and profiles in order to be successful. So that's a big transformation. All right, thank you. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, is that if you could go, you're on your slide 11 now. If you could go back to, if you're able to still drive those. Um, there's a question about your slide nine. Is that, well, you, you, I know you'll be able to answer it without having the slide up, but for everyone else's benefit. Is the backbone now illustrated as the as the green arrows in slide nine? Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm not sure about the number of the slides correspond to. Uh, that's the one. Well, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, funny enough, say eight in the arrow, but just nine at the at the slide number. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So the so the question was, uh, is the green arrows now the, um, the, backbone. the backbone? No. <laughs> that's the short answer. <laughs> Uh, the green arrows are essentially the value streams. So each green arrow controls one life cycle of the backbone. So it could be at the conceptual level where it's the, what is the real digital product scene from a customer perspective. It can be the requirement to deploy green arrow, the integrate one that controls the release. It can be the deploy one that controls the desired service model into the actual service model and the operate, which is detect to correct, which is around the actual service model. So a number of arrows controls the various life cycles of the backbone. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, let's see, um, can you elaborate on the relations between ITIL4 and IT for IT? <laughs> Uh, not in one minute. <laughs> well, no, I can, I can, I can say that uh, ITIL version four, among other things, starts to introduce the concept of value stream thinking, right? And and so uh, I wouldn't say they stole from us because we <laughs> we innovated that uh, uh, a long time ago in in even IT for IT version one had that concept. Um, now, the entire industry also SAFE is doing more on value stream mapping. So we are also taking it to the next level. So we're kind of a generation ahead of the pack, I would say, but, uh, but there is an alignment there. And absolutely, you can, you can implement a lot of the thinking in ISO version four on top of the architecture because we are an architecture, they are framework, right? They complement each other. They don't compete as such. Right, okay, great. Well, Lars, you've, you've brought us in right on time. Um, great job, and uh, I'll leave the questions there. There are some more. I don't know if you'll get a chance to uh, take a look in the in the Q and A uh, link there. There are a couple more questions that we didn't get to there, but um, thank you for your time. I do want to uh, keep on time so that people can go to the break.